You're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today a video that was suggested by a lot of you guys, the top 5 free to play decks to use in the upcoming KC Cup of course, this upcoming week. I want to note that free to play doesn't always mean a little amount of gems spent, some decks can be free to play but actually need more gem grinding than others. All the decks mentioned in my list though can be built without requiring you to spend any actual money. I will do my best to mention decks that don't need crazy amount of gems, which also may depend on your past investments in boxes. Leave a like and subscribe for more videos like these in the future, I would really appreciate the support. Without further ado though, let's begin with the top 5. Number 5. Super Heavy Samurai this deck is a classic free to play deck, meaning all of its support is coming from one single box, Future Horizon, making it easier and faster for players to actually build it. That said, it does require an ultra rare from the main box it's in. Super Heavy Samurai Wagon at 1 or better maybe at 2 copies. The deck can be kind of weird to play at first, but it has a really unique playstyle that can cause trouble to your opponent. It is a synchro deck with big synchro monsters that are able to attack while in defense position, by using their defense stat as their attack stat which is just amazing. Stealth Ninja and Soul Piercer is the main and most destructive combo of the deck, since Soul Piercer can be equipped to Ninja. The deck is played with no back row cards because they have various monsters with graveyard effects to do the work of a back row card, like Giga Gloves, who makes the opponent's monsters attack zero, and Flutist that protects your super heavy samurai monsters from targeting effects. But also, some of their monsters like Trumpeteer, your main tuner monster, have special summoning effects if you control no spells or traps. Great effects to help you win both in KC Cup and ranked. Everything is not great about the deck though, since at times it can struggle with its drawing and is having some problems in the current meta, with so many strong decks present at once. The worst deck on the list, but I cannot leave it off the list in a video like this just because of its free to play nature. Number 4. Cyber Dragons, a popular deck that can OTK everything in its path. While not the most consistent strategy in the meta, Cyber Dragons also mainly come from one box, the same as Super Heavy Samurai, Future Horizon. The problem with this deck is that Cyber Dragon and Cyber Twin Dragon, two cards that both see play, come from another main box and are ultra rare. That's always a tough build to swallow, but if you already have both of these cards, at least once, you're good to go in my opinion with Cyber Dragons. Because not only can you build the deck, but also you can go for Super Heavy Samurais at the same time by opening just one box. To talk more about the deck, it has a pretty standard build with Cyber Style and is based around fusion summons, of course, by being able to summon Cyber and Dragon, Cyber Twin Dragon, Chimera Tech Over Dragon, all need that one copy, and also Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon need that too, I think, because of its strong effect. Cyberload Fusion and Cybernetic Fusion support play the role of polymerization in this deck. Cybernetic Overflow is an incredible card because of its distraction effect, but also because it fuels your banish pile and combos perfectly with Cyberload Fusion, for you to make fusion plays, of course. As far as monsters go, other than the classic Cyber Dragon, Core and Vire are the needed ones because they make the whole deck flow. The deck can struggle with back row sometimes, so Cosmic Cyclone is also highly suggested. One of the best cards in the game anyway, so no harm in having it in your decks. Now here are some standard builds with Cyber Dragon decks. And let's move on to number 3, Dark Magician. Blue Eyes may be great, but too expensive for this list. But Dark Magician is manageable, in my opinion. The cards you need are Magician Navigation, an ultra rare from a mini box, and Dark Magical Circle, an ultra rare from a main box. The bad thing is you need both of them at 3 for the deck to be 100% optimal, but you can also work with 2 Circle if you are struggling to get the third one. By far the most expensive deck on the list, 
but the reason I have it present is because I think Dark Magician might be a safe investment for the future as well. Dark Magician is one of the poster boys of Yu-Gi-Oh, so getting future support is inevitable. And as we saw in the previous ban list, getting cards on the limited side of things is not that likely, especially now that it's no more the best deck in the game. Other than the two ultra rares I mentioned and maybe some extra deck monsters and stable cards depending on the variant you run and the cards you have available, you can get all the other core cards by the card trader, level up rewards or PvP tickets. 3 Rod, 3 Dark Magician, Illusion Magic, Dark Magic Attack, 1000 Knives, Magician of Dark Illusion, Knights and Sorcerer, all super easy to obtain. Currently Dark Magician is being played with a balance or a no mortal can resist build that does focus a bit around special summoning either fusion or synchro monsters. Fusion monsters like Amulet Dragon, available in the same box as Navigation, and Dark Cavalry, easily accessible by getting one EX structure deck with gems, and the synchro monsters like Vermilion or Gigantic Castle. What build you aim for is up to you and your available cards in the collection since none is clearly better than the other build. Number 2. Siranui Back to the cheap and easy decks to build from now on. Siranui has been a force in the meta since they came out. They got hit but nothing major to take them out of competition. They are still an explosive and control oriented synchro deck with great consistency. All their main and core cards come from a mini box. Soul of Resurrection. Level Augmentation and No Mortal Can Resist are totally the way to go at the moment for them and if you have a well-established card collection with various staples like Sphere Kuribo, Cosmic Cyclone or Wall of Disruption, you are in a great place to experiment with what back row you like to play with them. A lot of people run Gold Sarcophagus in their builds, a card synergizing greatly with Siranui, but being available only with money or dream tickets, I would advise against it. Not a necessity anyways. I also have more videos with Siranui on the channel so you can totally see their playstyle through those as well. Here are some of my builds with level augmentation, mainly because that's the skill I prefer running. I haven't really tried Isizu's No Mortal Can Resist yet. And reaching the number one spot for the best free to play deck for this case cup in my opinion, Luna Lights. One of the most popular decks in the game right now and for good reason. A powerful fusion OTK deck that is pretty free to play friendly and got released in the latest Judgment Force main box. A lot of people pair it up with a Neos Fusion engine without playing multiple cards from the EX structure deck. Of course, the optimal would be with multiple copies, but the free to play seems to work relatively ok. The deck can of course be played with no Neos cards. With Luna Light Bird, Marten, Fox and Rabbit being the main monsters for the deck, along of course with the Fusion monsters Sabre Dancer and Cat Dancer. Other than Luna Light cards, other stuff you'll need are polymerization and maybe the fusion recycling plant that has been gaining popularity as of late in builds. And some staple of course like Kytroid, Sphere Kuribo or some background hate like the classic Cosmic Cyclone. Being able to set a monster's attack to zero with Fox, an ODK with the effect of Cat Dancer is undoubtedly a strong move for Luna Lights. Saber Dancer is also a powerhouse in your deck, allowing you to run over a lot of monsters in the game, so you won't struggle finding a recipe that might work for you. So here are some example builds for Luna Lights, so you can have something to base your deck around. And the deck is probably gonna be run with either Master of Fusion or Grid, but Grid seems to be the way to go for most players. And that is my list, I hope it helped some of you guys. The first stage of the case cup is always easier than the second and sometimes even easier than ranked as well, so all these decks can have success in it. Some honorable mentions are for decks that are totally possible to build as free to play, but they need support from multiple order boxes and they are more expensive than decks I mentioned like Dark Magician and Cyber Dragons, the two most expensive decks on the list. Although the honorable mentions may be better, so it's on you if you have the older support and you want to go for these decks instead. 
Of course I am talking about Blue Eyes and Light Swords, two of the best 5 meta decks at the moment in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. That's it for me, thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe for more Duel Links free to play content and I'll see you in the next one.